Hi there, I'm Kyle Shepard, and uh, we see some of you have joined us. So we're going to get in place and get started. We've got uh, Kathleen Johnson and Mackenzie Goller here this morning to, or this afternoon, I should say, to bring us a Teaching Tuesday. It's a cool lesson on animal defenses. So I'm going to be behind the camera shouting out questions to these guys. So if you have a question, this is also interactive. We're going to be asking for some answers. So put those in your comment box, and I'll shout them out to these, to these ladies, and we're going to teach you about some animal defenses. We miss you. We're going to be practicing good social distances. Uh, Kinsey and, and Kathleen, you'll see, are six feet apart. I'm going to be behind the camera. If they walk toward the camera, I'm going to back away because we're practicing good social distancing and hope you are as well. Let's get started. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, we do. We miss you so much. We had so many programs that we were excited to teach this spring, but that's okay because we can do it this way. It'll be just as fun, I promise. My name is Miss Kenzie. Uh, welcome to Teaching Tuesday. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Kathleen. Welcome to Teaching Tuesday. We are so excited that you're here today with us. We've been waiting for you all day to join us for the Teaching Tuesday. And what we're going to do is have a very fun lesson for you guys. And we want everyone to participate. We love participation. So as Miss Kyle said, as we roll along today, we would love for you to put your comments in the comment box, ask questions, give us answers as we go along, and let's have some fun with our lesson. So it's really exciting, not only today are we going to be talking about animal defenses, but it's going to be our theme all week long. So today, we're going to do Teaching Tuesday, but tomorrow, we're going to extend on that even more with our creature free creature feature, and then Thursday also join us for Lift Up Weevil at the Pygmy Hippo because we're going to talk about animal defenses there as well. Super exciting week. Alright, so theme this week, animal defenses. A couple things I want to talk about before we get going because we're going to be using some vocabulary words often throughout the lesson and I want you to be familiar with them. So, let's start with defense. What does the word defense mean? Well, it's simple. A defense is really just how an animal is going to keep itself safe, or maybe keep its offspring safe, or its home safe. These defenses can be structures. A lot of you guys, I bet, are learning about structures. They can be behaviors, or the way the animal actually acts to stay safe. Or they could be a chemical. It could be a lot of different things. So really think outside the box. Any way an animal stays safe. When we talk about predators, predators are an animal that naturally preys on another. Preys. I want you to put prey. <laughs> prey. An animal that is hunted by another animal <clears throat> for a little tasty snack. Thank you, Ms. Kenzie. What we're going to do right now is flip our board around, and this is where all of you guys have a chance to participate with us. We need for all of you to think real quickly about some cool defenses that animals have. So once again, some way that animals are able to protect themselves, keep themselves safe. It could be a body part, something that's very special about an animal's body. It could be a behavior, some type of action that an animal can do to help keep itself safe. It could be something strange, like Ms. Kenzie mentioned, a chemical or those types of things. So let's keep those ideas coming in. I'm going to write a list of all of your fantastic ideas right here on the board as we go along. And then we'll continue on with our topic for the day. So Ms. Kyle's going to give us some thoughts. How does an animal stay safe? Ms. Kenzie. Today, as I was walking through the zoo, I was looking at all the beautiful blossoms and flowers, and I saw a bunch of honeybees. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Buzzing from one to another. Ladies, we have our first answer. Jill says camouflage. <gasps> Jill, that's so good. good. Jill, awesome. Let's write camouflage. That's a tricky word to spell, but we're going to spell it out for you. So for those of you who like to look at how words are spelled, very nice, Jill. And for those of you who Thank are just you. joining us, remember that the theme this whole week is going to be animal defenses. So if you're thinking of animal defenses right now, put them in the comments below. And if you need to know what camouflage is, it might be a familiar word. 
but camouflage simply means to blend in. So you've got colors that can help you hide with all of the natural surroundings that uh, are around you. So that's a great one to start off with. We need another great idea here. While you're thinking, Melissa asks if this lesson's going to be online somewhere later. Yes, it is. So you guys can get all this information on legalzoo.org backslash together. We'll have this and extensions for uh, all the lessons you can find there. Right. Can I throw out one? Miss Kyle, we would love for you to throw one out there. Quills. 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 Whoa. We love quills. All right. We're going to talk about Quills. Goller girls, if you're watching, mommy wants an answer. All right, quills are fantastic. Um, there aren't a lot of words in our English dictionary that start with the letter Q, so I really like that word quills. You might be familiar with this animal. Let's show you a picture. We're going to talk about an animal that has quills. What could it be? If you think for a moment, you might have guessed. Our amazing neighbor in the forest, the porcupine, look at all of those quills on their body. This is something interesting you may not know. A porcupine can have close to 30,000 quills on its body. Wow, that Let's, is amazing. That is a very fantastic defense. And let's take a look at what these quills are. Here are some quills. Um, boys and girls from a North American porcupine. We have them here close to a ruler so you can kind of get an idea of how long they might be in inches. Looks like this one is, um, you know, about three inches long. Those are very long quills. And if we look at each individual quill, what in the world are these things? What body part would these be? If you guessed hair, then you are correct. It doesn't look quite like people hair, right? They're very stiff and kind of hard to the touch. They're lightweight, they're not very heavy. But on the end of each quill is the true defense. We've got a very sharp pokey end here on the end of each quill. You may have heard that porcupines are able to shoot their quills out through the air, launch them like arrows, pew, pew, to defend themselves, but they can't actually do that. They have to make some type of contact with another animal's body. So a porcupine might slap another animal that gets too close to it, kind of whack it with its tail, and some of those quills will easily come out. Perhaps a porcupine will back into another animal, maybe a fox that got a little bit too close that's hoping to prey upon a porcupine. We have some more answers. We would love. Miss McKenzie's daughter, Ryan, says a shell. <gasps> Michelle says claws. <gasps> Michelle and Ryan, those are perfect. And Michelle also added poison. Poison, very, very nice. Let's very nice. Some of those on. We love those answers, poison. Oh, and I have one more from Clark, who's six years old. Clark says rhinos use their horns. We love it, horns. That is a very smart answer. Very, very nice. Very nice. And we know that horns can be sharp as well, so that's a great defense. Absolutely. And we have the thought of the shell, correct? We did. Ooh, shell. I also have one more from Robin, who says when an animal shows mostly an unexposed part of their body, like under their wing, to scare away predators. Very nice. Sometimes there's some really vibrant colors hiding underneath there, or sometimes they might mimic another animal. Can anybody think of something that's similar to poison, but it works a little bit differently? Hmm. That's a hard one. It really is, but I bet you guys know the answer to it. Starts with a V. <gasps> Someone said it. Let's get it in here. Venom. Very Venom. Nice. Woo. Excellent. If you're wondering what the difference is between those two, venom is going to be something that is injected, okay? So snakes may inject a venom. Poison, on the other hand, is going to be on that animal. So if you touch it, then you're going to get sick. Michelle also asked extra eyes like a butterfly or a moth. Very, very nice. 
I can picture some animals, Miss Kenzie, butterflies and moths and things that might have eye spots in their body that aren't their true eyes, but they look like really big, huge eyes that might startle a predator into thinking that, oh, they're being watched and looks kind of uh, scary, so I'm not right. going to mess with that animal. Or it might confuse the predator. It might go to the other end and get the time to get away. Rory says ink from an octopus. I, that's fantastic. That's really good. Go yeah, Rory. Our friends in the ocean, right? So thanks, Rory. Ink from an octopus. Four-year-old Andy says a beaver slaps its tail in the water. Four-year-old Andy, <laughs> you know what? Beavers are so cool. They have a lot of very neat adaptations. You should totally look it up when you get done with this because they're one of my favorite animals to teach about. And yes, they do slap their tails in the water. It's a very loud voice that warns the other beavers in the family and who are nearby that there's danger and maybe everybody should stay away sure. and warn their other their family members to take cover real right. Using communication as a way to defend. Wow, our list is looking amazing. amazing. More things are coming in. Shall we explore another one, Miss Kenzie, I while we're waiting for some more ideas? I love the idea of a shell as protection, as a defense for animals. I do too. I do too. Do you think any of our viewers can think of animals that have a shell? Think hard. We're waiting for an answer to come in. We should have brought the Jeopardy music, ladies. Something maybe that moves slowly on land that you can think of. There might be a creature in the ocean. Somebody's got it out there. Get those fingers typing. We know it. <gasps> oh, somebody's typing, but... Yep. Miss Kathleen, could you bring that just a little closer and I'll back to. away? There we go. They hatch with their shells already on and attached to their bodies. And the shells just grow right along with them, as Miss Kenzie said. So as they grow, their shells grow and keep them defended or protected throughout their lives. Hey, ladies, for anybody who might be joining us, would you like to sort of retell what we're, we're doing today? Absolutely. So today we are talking about animal defenses. Not only are we talking about animal defenses today, but we will be talking about it Wednesday during Creature Feature and Thursday when we go meet the pygmy hippopotamus here at the zoo. So this is going to be a, a very uh, well-rounded week for you to learn all kinds of great things about animal defenses. Um, and if you want extension activities, you can do that by visiting legalzoo.org backslash together, and we'll have some resources there for you to use as well. We're having a good lesson so far. We hope you guys are having fun. Uh, so maybe we can come up with a couple of more examples. Yes, let's do that. And Miss Kenzie, as I yes. mentioned earlier, when I saw those honeybees, what types of defense do bees have? Ouch! Has anybody ever been 
Stung. Yeah, be quick by a bee. Stung by a bee, stung by a wasp, stung by a hornet. It's not a very pleasant experience for us. But for the animal who has that stinger, it could mean the difference between living, surviving, or not surviving. So that's an important defense for some of those animals out there as well. I have a couple coming in from love it. Corey Clinton. Corey Clinton! <laughs> That would be Mackenzie's brother. Yes. Uh, Corey says defense example is to run super fast. Oh, I love that. Stella, Stella adds a thick hide. Very good. And she also, Stella also says musk. Musk, yeah. very good. Those are all really good. So a lot of the times when we think about defenses, we just think about structures. But also, like I said earlier, a way an animal behaves. So someone, not some, well, maybe some. But an animal being able to run very quickly, or a frog being able to leap far, those are all things they can use to defend themselves. Right, and here at the zoo, I know for a fact that sometimes when we use our ambassador animals or education animals in our programs, they might pull out a defense trick or two on <laughs> us while we're teaching. And I know we've pretty much all been musked by one of our snakes. So yes. if a snake feels startled, it might let off a terrible smell, some chemicals and some stuff coming out of its body, <laughs> which just smell disgusting and it would give another animal pause, uh, meaning they might be um, just startled real quickly or think it's a horrible smell and just leave that animal alone. And I can think of another animal that lets off a very bad smell that you might be familiar with. Think of an animal <laughs> that has black and white coloring and some stripes. Give us an answer. Lights come out at night. Does it begin with an S? It begins with it, it does. That good SK blend there. I know some of you are typing, hopefully. Musk. We're gonna put musk kind of bad smells. If you were in my school at the zoo class uh, about two months ago, you, my students, got must. And it was, it was, it was just a great day for all. <laughs> a lovely must day. It was a must day. Maybe you yeah. haven't had a uh, pet dog or cat at home who's encountered one of these animals that's like and white stripe, that smells terrible, sprays you. Whoosh. Oh, I know that somebody out there has the answer. It is... Uh-oh, she's writing it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we got it. Boys and girls. We're there. Skunk! Everybody's familiar with the skunk. You don't want to mess with those animals either. Please don't go out and try to make friends with the skunk because your family really won't appreciate it. And you'll smell bad for days. I'm not sure if Elias is referring, referring to the skunk, but Elias says it's one of his favorite animals. The skunk! I'm not sure which animal, but maybe... Maybe it's a skunk. They're very beautiful to look at, you know. They, they, they come out kind of in the evening or the early morning hours and they're moving around trying to find something to eat. Right. So everything has a place in nature. And curiously, that skunk, that terrible skunk smell does not deter or, or keep all predators away. There's mm -hmm. another animal out there that loves them. That loves to eat skunks. Um, in spite of the fact that those skunks are spraying that defense for you, like, psh, right? It is called a great horned owl. So if you know what a great horned owl looks like, there's an animal that that, is not that's awesome. not discouraged by the skunk's defense of a bad smell. All right, let's think of, you know, Miss Kenzie. Let's do it. I mean, right. we love we love the idea of camouflage here. We talk about cam camouflage in the animal kingdom all the time. All the time. It's a fantastic defense to discuss. So, Miss Kenzie's going to give a good example of an animal that has great camouflage. I bet you can think of a lot of animals that have camouflage. Ones that just blend in with the colors around them. They just can't be seen. They can hide so well. Predators. Just pass right by them, not even knowing that they're there. Why, every time you walk in the forest or in the woods or in the park, you probably pass by lots of animals and 
don't even realize it because they have such good camouflage and well hidden. Very good, very good. So a lot of people, when we talk about camouflage, they think that only the animals that can change color or change the way their body looks has camouflage. But that's not the way it is. We have some answers from Michelle, walking sticks, oh and my from Holly, <laughs> a, a, I'm sorry, from Abby, a chameleon. Oh, very good. Leaf bugs from Michelle. Love them. And an iguana from Mackenzie's oh. brother, Corey. Yay! Actually, yes. Iguanas, they're green in color and they can blend in with those tree leaves and the trees that they sit in. Um, and walking sticks, they just look like literally a little stick. They can like find on the ground or around the tree, so their camouflage is superb. Animals can camouflage in a lot of different ways, including many other things like the stick bugs. Or we talked about the eyes earlier. They can be on different parts of their bodies. Maybe it's on the back, so they attack the back end so they can get away. Maybe they can't change colors, or maybe they just blend into where they live. Yeah. But there's one animal that a lot of people don't really think about having camouflage, and it indeed does. Huh. This is a very, very large animal, so it might be sort of hard for this animal to blend in, but you'd be surprised how good of a job this animal does. Do we know what this animal is? We do we will? I think they're thinking. <gasps> Miss Abby said it. Giraffe. Yes. Giraffe. Okay, so it is crazy to think that in Africa, these huge animals have great camouflage. It is the pattern in their skin that allows them to blend into that savanna. Okay, giraffes are born with the same number of spots that they'll have their whole life. They're just gonna get more and more spread out. Giraffes, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see how well one might blend in with these colors. There's a couple other African animals that have a similar coloring that also allow them to camouflage into those tall, kind of light brown and dark brown grasses of that area. Maybe sort of like a lion, too. You know, Ms. Kinsey, that's a great point because people often think of camouflage as being extremely important for the prey animals, animals that are hunted and eaten. But you know what? I bet you guys have thought of this too because you guys are such smart scientists out there. It's camouflage is just as important for predators. Think about that. If you're a predator trying to catch something to eat, you don't want to be seen either. No, you want to just sneak up, stalk, hide, and have that advantage if you're going to run after something super quickly or pounce on something or stalk something slowly. So camouflage is very important for predators Absolutely. as well. Not everybody thinks of that. Absolutely. But just it's as true. important. Mm -hmm. Just as important as a survivor. Survive both. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go, guys. This is what I'm going to challenge you with. We've identified a couple animals that match with their defense. I want you at home to fill in the rest. What animals do you know that have poison, that have horns, that have venom or ink? Okay? What animals are really, really fast? Think about those and talk with whoever is around you, big sisters and little sisters alike, and come up with some of those examples. Additionally, do not forget that tomorrow we're going to talk more about animal defenses. You're going to meet one of our animal ambassadors here at the MetaZoo up close and personal and learn a lot more specifically how that animal defends itself. We'll also have extension activities on louisvillezoo.org backslash together. Okay, you can use those at home to enrich those lessons that I know parents are working on their kids right now. Um, thank you, Ms. Kenzie. And thank you, boys and girls, moms, dad, uncles, grandparents, whoever's out there helping your kids to learn yes. during this challenging time that we have. We miss you. We look forward to seeing you once again here at the zoo. Please enjoy this beautiful spring day.
and I'm, I'm going to pop in and I'm going to pop in and, and remind you about Fitz Friday as well. Join us here, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for Fitz Friday. Uh, join us on all our social channels for all the content she just said, the Creature Feature on Wednesdays, the Lift Up Louisville Thursdays, Fitz Fridays, and then on Saturday and Sundays we'll have a taped piece for you on each of those channels as well. So we do miss you. Practice good social distancing. Wash your hands for 20 seconds, and we'll see you when you get back. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you.